In this series of videos, we're going to talk about Hammett substituent constants and linear free energy relations, which are fancy sounding words for the basic goal of quantifying the effect of changes in the electron donating or withdrawing properties of substituents on the rate or extent, which is related to equilibrium, of an organic reaction. And so what we're going to do here is connect qualitative ideas about electron donating and withdrawing groups that we've examined previously in discussions of delocalized pi systems, and I'll link back to a couple of videos where we talk about and introduce donating and withdrawing groups. We're going to connect those qualitative ideas with a quantitative idea and really put an answer to the question, what is the empirical evidence for these electron donating withdrawing effects that we draw in Lewis structures? Because after all, a Lewis structure is just some scribbles on a piece of paper. What is the empirical justification for saying a dimethyl amino group is electron donating or a nitro group is electron withdrawing? We will see that evidence in this series of videos and we'll see how once we have a quantitative scale of how donating or withdrawing a substituent is, we can relate that across different types of reactions to gain mechanistic insight and get a quantitative idea of how much a change in the electronic properties of a substituent is going to change the rate of our reaction. If there's a steep dependence there, we may be in trouble if, for example, we change a dimethyl amino group to a nitro group. The reaction may stop working, side reactions may come in, and we may generally introduce problems. The idea of a linear free energy relation allows us to understand and answer those questions in a quantitative sense. As a general outline of this series, let's start with the basic question which is if we've got a chemical reaction in which there's some variable substituent, we're interested in exploring the scope of a chemical reaction, for example, when we can vary the electron donating or withdrawing properties of that substituent from one extreme to another, say a dimethyl amino group as an extreme example of an electron donating substituent and the nitro group as an example of an extreme withdrawing substituent. The basic question is, what is the effect on the rate and position of equilibrium of our reaction when we go from an electron donating group to an electron withdrawing group? A kind of equivalent question is, how donating is a dimethyl amino group? How withdrawing is a nitro group? Can we define some quantitative scale of, say, withdrawing power, where donating groups are negative, withdrawing groups are positive, and then relate that to rates and uh, equilibrium constants in a chemical reaction. We can, and that's the entire idea and goal behind Hammett substituent parameters or Hammett sigmas. So we're going to start by defining those. These really provide a scale, provide the independent variable for investigating the effect of donating withdrawing power on rate across a wide variety of reactions where the rate or equilibrium constant really becomes our dependent variable for a new reaction that we've never studied before. And what we get out of relating those sigma values to rate constants or equilibrium constants are called linear free energy relationships, or LFERs, as you'll hear me abbreviate them, or LFERs. These linear free energy relations are interesting and valuable in a quantitative sense, but also provide us with some deep mechanistic information. And we'll see the implications of that later on in this series of videos. First, though, I want to return back to qualitative ideas about electron donating and withdrawing substituents and their effects on the rates of organic reactions. A basic and general principle of organic chemistry is that nucleophiles, Lewis bases, react with electrophiles, Lewis acids. And in terms of rate and the position of equilibrium, organic reactions are most rapid and most favorable when the nucleophile has high electron density, in other words, partial or even full negative charge, and the electrophile has low electron density, partial positive charge or full positive charge. And so we could say that the electron density in the nucleophile and electrophile are large and complementary in especially fast and favorable organic reactions. What donating and withdrawing groups do then is either give electrons to or take electrons away from reacting centers. And this has the potential to either speed up or slow down reactions. And whether a speeding up or a slowing down occurs depends qualitatively on whether a molecule is giving electrons away or accepting electrons in the slow step 
of the reaction mechanism. And so we're going to look at two scenarios on this slide of two different classes of reactions, we might say, where we're varying a substituent and looking at the effect on rate. In this first class on the left, let's imagine that the substrate containing the variable substituent is donating electrons in the rate determining or in the slow step. Put another way, here we're imagining that the substrate, which here is this substituted benzene, aromatic compound, is a nucleophile. In the slow step, this molecule is giving electrons away, donating electrons. That is nucleophilic reactivity, nucleophilic behavior. Nucleophiles are increased in reactivity by electron donating groups because the donating group is increasing electron density at the nucleophilic site. For example, this methoxy group is donating electrons to the aromatic ring, increasing the electron density at the carbon that serves as the nucleophile. And in fact, it increases electron density at all the carbons of the ring to some extent, but particularly those ortho and para positions. And so because the donating group is giving additional electrons to a portion of the molecule that's giving electrons away, this step is fast and favorable. The methoxy group being an electron donating group is critical for that. In the bottom case, we've replaced that donating methoxy group with an electron withdrawing cyano group. The ring is still acting as a nucleophile. In fact, the reaction is exactly the same. This is an electrophilic aromatic nitration. But the effect of the withdrawing group now is to remove electron density from the carbons of the ring. Because the ring is trying to give electrons away, in the slow or rate determining step, this slows down that step considerably. The electron withdrawing nature of the cyano group pulls electron density out of the ring, makes it a poorer nucleophile, and makes this step slow and or unfavorable. And so when the ring is acting as a nucleophile, electron donating groups are going to accelerate the step. Electron withdrawing groups will slow down the step. Of course, now we can turn the reactivity of the substrate on its head. And imagine what happens when the ring is acting, or the substrate, the substrate containing the variable substituent, really, in general, is acting not as a nucleophile, but as an electrophile. And so now I've switched the reactivity from electrophilic substitution occurring on the left to nucleophilic substitution occurring here on the right, where a nucleophile is donating electrons to the ring and a leaving group is displaced. Now we still have the same substituents, cyano and methoxy, cyano is still electron withdrawing. But the effect now of that electron withdrawing group is to pull electron density out of the ring as before, making this carbon that reacts a stronger electrophile. And in that way, accelerating this step. The electrophile now has more partial positive charge, less electron density at that reactive center, Therefore, the reaction is now fast and favorable, owing to the withdrawing effect of the cyano group. On the other side, you can probably guess by now what's going to happen. If I am trying to use this molecule as the electrophile, and it has a donating group that is already donating electrons to the ring, increasing electron density within the ring, well now, this carbon that is supposed to accept electrons is not as electron poor as it was in the top case. And so, owing to the donating power of that methoxy group, the electrophilic benzene ring is not as good an electrophile. It's not as electrophilic, which makes this step with the donating group substituting the ring slow and unfavorable. So we can see here that whether the ring is acting as a nucleophile or electrophile has a profound effect on the influence of an electron withdrawing group or donating group attached to the substrate. And this is an entirely qualitative conversation so far and, and is going to apply to any electron donating or withdrawing group to a greater or lesser extent. By and large, what we want to do in the remainder of this video series is put a quantitative spin on this idea. You know, how much does the cyano group accelerate this process relative to, say, just a hydrogen there? How much does the methoxy group slow down this process relative to hydrogen? We'll put a quantitative answer to those questions once we've defined the Hammett substituent constant. 